my talk today is on um, electrophysiological test that can be used to find out the functions of uh, retina optic nerve pathway and all you know one thing suppose a patient has come is having some injury in in the eye you are not able to assess the function of retina whether it's working or not the best option is of course ultrasonogram b scan and all can help us to find out the status anatomical status or anatomical integrity of retina whereas the function you can find it with electrophysiological test classically we got electroretinogram and um, of course we got other things like electroechocardiogram and visual evoke potentials my talk here is on first i'll talk something about the electroretinogram see these subjective tests no all the electrophysiological test allow us to or assess the the entire length of visual pathway the basic thing are supposed to know here everyone knows that all of us should know this the receptors are the rods and cones whereas the first order neurons are the inner nuclear layer otherwise called bipolar cells the second order neuron is ganglion cells from there the white fiber tract nothing but the connecting the second order neuron that is ganglion cells to they go they go as axons which are called as optic nerve other areas and the actually the third order neuron in the visual pathway is in the lateral geniculate body always remember optic nerve other things optic nerve is only miss it's not a nerve it's a misnomer it's only a, a white fiber tract never forget that this is a common exam questions we'll ask you optic nerve is a misnomer it's only a white fiber tract connecting the second order neuron up to geniculate body which is that which is having the third order neurons that's why you know when you have a problem in the optic nerve normally it doesn't regenerate this is also an exam question for you that is absence of neural lemma is a reason for this problem this optic nerve cannot regenerate when it is damaged because of the absence of neural lemma so for the basics now we know we have got when the light falls on the retina we have got so many changes are happening on the rods and cones areas and all and that's what we are going to find out what is the age now imagine now the light is falling at the retina the receptors rods and cones are going to have some stimulations something energy is getting liberated that is called action potentials generated from the rods and cones which we are going to record from the eye what does that mean now erg actually represents or finds out the function integrity functional integrity of the rods and cones never forget that one more thing i'll tell you eog electroechocardiogram is mainly to assess the function of pigment epithelium these are basic things what about the vep visual light potentials visual light potential is to assess the function of ganglion cell layers in above these all basic things never forget exam questions now what is erg now here what is the mass see what is not see erg when the light is falling whatever with the dark adapted light adapted when the light is falling on the retina any part of the retina if it is functioning they can generate the impulse that's the most important thing that's why it, it is not specific for generally it is not specific for to, for a functional different they are there, something a specific area in the retina this is a mass response from photoreceptors of the retina what is happening i told you action potentials are generated for the light stimuli these are all the things so you know, recording how to do recording in the case of erg one pupil to be dilated 
then what is the what is the active electrode electrode it is on the cornea what is the reference electrode it is in the forehead cornea or maybe the lid itself back of the lid whereas reference electrodes usually on the forehead ground electrodes usually begin the ear this is the way they are going to record what is active electrode what is active electrode that is going to be steel see these are all hard contact lenses that covers the sclera never forget his name brian allen just know the name sir of just write in the examination so you can write brian allen electrode which can be kept in the cornea covers the sclera also made up of what maybe contact lens gold contact lens gelated gel, gel electrode so many things are there they are all is possible one more thing is there an active electrode just filamentary type it's a filament type electrode placed on the lower lid include the gold foil electrodes just know this one more electrode is there placed on the lower lid is enough then what is reference electrodes this is a silver chloride electrode placed on patient's forehead actually is what happened on the active electrodes acting like a positive pole whereas then reference electrode acts like a negative pole that's all whereas the what ground electrode is what near the ear lobe these are all the basic uh, things never for one important point you are not you are not you are supposed to remember is pupil is dilated never forget when you xp when you are going to record the erg next is what see the now is electrodes see now you have got a one electrode here see the one electrode here now one electrode here now of course on the ear lobe there are three types of electrodes now for the recording purpose what's the recording protocol i already told you full pupillary dilatation then what patient to be kept in dark that is called dark adapted i at least for 30 minutes now what i going to see now i'll tell you what you are going to find out in dark adapted i rods are highly responsive even a minimum light a blue light can stimulate your rods the impulse can arise that is called they can be recorded that is called rod response next you have got now we can have a red flash or a white flash light which can be applied that means what they are going to stimulate both rods and cones that is called maximum combined response that's called maximum combined response now when you have this recording so you know, normally we do see something called oscillatory potentials where in the ascending limb of b wave just know this oscillatory potentials can be recorded i told now a blue light a dark adapted eye rods are getting responded and you are going to record the rod response then a red light or a white light flash which can record the com combined response of both rods and cones then when the rods and cones are going getting responded you can have typical erg waves like ab and all in the b wave which is the positive wave in the ascending part of the b wave you can have some oscillatory potentials which not which are normal that also can be recorded you know the importance of oscillatory potentials oscillatory potentials are all nothing but indicating the inner nuclear inner plexiform layers are all getting proper nourishment nutrition is okay that means otherwise one the blood supply is okay there is nothing is there that is what the importance of this oscillatory potentials then we about you now after recording all these things now you keep the patient in light for at least 10 15 minutes that light adapted now you put a single flash cone you can respond a cone response and i want to have only cones the rod should not take part here that means one you need a flickering light of 30 hertz that's called 30 hertz flickering per minute that means what these are all the flickering that's called 30 hertz set you might have seen the is you can see that 30 hertz yes is that flickers for 30 hertz is that what happens now only the cones can respond whereas the rods cannot respond for more than 12 hertz that's what is nothing but the flickering rate 
per second or per minute, we can tell it. But the basic thing is what 30 hertz flickers, the cone only can respond. If I go up less flickers, like 10 flickers, uh, that is a 10 hertz and all naturally can both can respond. That's the beauty. That's why the problem, if you want only the cone functions, they have 30 hertz. Never forget that. That means what they will have two things. One dark adapted eye, one is light adapted eye. They are going to respond examine this what they are going to record never forget these are all the common things they can ask you in examinations sir. next part never forget here the stimulus is what a gansfeld ball what is what is that never forget this is also an exam question gansfeld ball what is ball they are here the stimulus is an illimited ball which projects diffuse light into all parts of pandas of course, you can see the intensity and the frequency of flashes can be changed. What is Gansfeld below? It's a stimulus. Stimulus is an stimulus in ARG. Just know this called Gansfeld bowel, which can be used in stimulating the retina in a case of ERG. Only the intensity thing can be changed. Now, this is what the normal I tell you. We have got A wave. In a typical EA, a typical ERG, I'll tell you that the combined response and all. You can see the E wave coming down. It's a negative response. Then you see the ascending limb of B wave. You see the oscillated potentials here. Then it's coming down the B wave. These are the basic things. What is called A wave is negative. Reflex receptor functions. B wave is positive. What do you mean by B wave coming from where? So A wave, nothing. Never forget this point. A wave is coming from rods and cones. The B wave from just remember B for B. B wave from bipolar cells and one more the Muller cells. What is Muller cell? Muller cell takes care of your nutrition and integrity of the retina. What is new Muller cells? It is extending from internal limited membrane to external limited membrane. It is nothing but it's mainly for nutritional functions, supportive function of the retina. This is called Muller cells. Now we see B wave coming from where? It's a positive wave coming from where? Bipolar cells as well as Muller cells activity. Then what is oscillated potentials? I told you oscillated potentials are what? I, I told you what the, the current effect, something a current, rippling current effect occurring in the inner plexi form. What do you mean by that? The nutrition in the Indian nuclear in plexi formula is okay. That's all your answer. Now, again, I tell you, I will explain here now. This is called the dark adapted eye. Dark adapted, we keep the position in dark, people dilated with the electrodes and all on position. Now, positions. See now, the blue light is falling. The first day you can see now the blue light. This is the blue light response. That means what the rod response is the curve. Just know this. But one, beauty, one thing you can notice is the A wave is not typically seen, not much. Only some B wave you can see. Whereas the A wave, if at all seen very small, or it's not at all seen, that's all the in rod response, we can have the B wave may be seen, the rod response may or may not be. Whereas a combined response, both white flashlight or even you can have a red light, whatever thing you can have, Response of rods and cones both together. You see now here, this is the response. See the now the wave starts from here and goes down a wave, which is nothing but of course, it's a corresponding to the impulse coming from your rods and cones again. But the B wave, I told you, is an assign, assign a positive wave going up, is what now is going up? Is a positive wave coming from bipolar cells and Muller cells, that's all. And other things are coming down. Sometimes, Sometimes you can experience or you can see, of course, not in uh, uh, practical points, maybe in academics or some clinical something examinations, and not in no only for academic purpose. See, they can exp ex see some positive wave, C wave also may be there sometimes. The C wave is coming from pigmentary epithelial cells. Never forget this point. The C wave, if at all noticed in ERG, is it coming from your pigment epithelium. And sometimes you can have D wave also, D, A, B, C, D, this D wave also may, of course, not shown here. D wave also can be seen. That is what? 
the light is there light is switched off light is there switched off that means what on off phenomena it's called on off phenomena d wave of course this c and d wave is all only not uh, it's only something in a laboratory purpose not for clinical purpose just know for clinical indications we can have a and b wave only classical one more thing i'll tell you one more thing here is what's happening now when you see this combined response that means what the white flash here in this area in this area if you see here the b a wave is coming down that means at the time of onset is here the b a wave is coming down between the onset of a wave and the onset of impulse onset of impulse between this here and the onset of a wave you can have sometimes a positive wave coming going up and come sometimes i can have a positive wave going up and coming down that is called erp what is erp early receptor potential early receptor potential what do you mean by that exam question again what do you mean by that early receptor potential what's the significance your answer is sir when the light is falling on the retina in a dark adapted eye we can have rhodopsin cycle going on you know that now what's happening rhodopsin cycle i got so many steps you got beta rhodopsin lumi rhodopsin meta 1 meta 2 like this now what is this indicates the erp presence of erp if you are able to see the erp before the onset of a wave that means what the meaning is what the lumira rhodopsin is getting converted into meta 1 rhodopsin normally that means what's a normal affair it's a normal affair that means so here is what now the lumira rhodopsin to meta rhodopsin conversion is shown as erp the early receptor potential exam question again they may ask you here now i'll tell you these are all the waves and a third scene of the third wave this is the dark and upper eye i told you told you third you can see this here the third this third area this is what these are all the oscillatory potentials oscillatory potentials generated from the oscillating by b wave and depicted here what's the importance here the oscillatory potentials normally seen or normally seen whereas if they are deranged never forget is dot if they are not seen or deranged your answer is sir there may be some problem going on in the inner plexiform layer in the nuclear layer areas what the problem now maybe some ischemia is going on hypoxia is going on that's why i'll tell you the examination in examination last one question doctor is having a diabetic patient is a diabetic patient 10 years duration you are seeing fundus fundus appears normal for you not able to see any problem but how do you know in future this patient may develop any problem in future how do you know your answer should be sir i would like to do erg if i find the problems in oscillatory potentials i can suspect this patient may going for problems in future that's all answer never forget this point in diabetic retinopathy it can it can give us a clue this fellow may develop in future because you can see the hypoxia going on in the nuclear layer which may end up in other retinopathy changes this is a classical again exam question for you never forget this erp so these are all the various you know i told you now this is the rod response you see now in this rod response the a wave is not typical you can see the b wave whereas in combined response a and b a never forget a wave corresponds to receptor photoreceptor functions the b wave coming from bipolar and muller cells i let told you one more c wave positive maybe that pigment epithelial functions then one more d wave maybe in on off phenomena on off phenomena oscillatory potentials are normally taken from ascending liver b wave this oscillatory potentials may be deranged when the inner plexiform in the nuclei they are all suffering with the hypoxia that is why it can be used to detect early changes of diabetes this is a common question again so now can you see now other points you are supposed to know in regarding erg see we got two things you are supposed to know when you study about the erg this a wave you know that a wave is a negative wave b wave is a positive wave now you should know what is the amplitude amplitude of amplitude of a wave amplitude of b wave what is amplitude now see the amplitude column is here see now from here the baseline is a base baseline here the baseline from there to the trough of the a wave you examine this area this is the amplitude that means what the amplitude so much from here to like this the amplitude of a wave is a negative pattern 
amplitude is baseline to the trough. What about the B wave amplitude from the trough of A wave to the B wave height? Crest, you can tell. So from that means what B wave amplitude is from trough of A wave to the maximum B. This is what B wave amplitude. One more point I'll tell you. The time taken for, suppose the light flash starts here, the light flash starts here. From that to the max impulse of the A wave coming, you know, that means what B to impulse is starting, the light is falling. Now the max impulse is reaching A wave, that the time taken for this in milliseconds is the implicit time. Same way, that's called A wave implicit time. Same way you got B wave. The B wave, the light starting from the B light area starting point to the B wave maximum amplitude, that's the implicit time of B wave. Just know there are two things only, amplitude and implicit time. Amplitude reduced, amplitude reduced or implicit time prolonged. These are two words you're supposed to use. Nothing is there. Of course, now everything is all the waves are getting absent. You tell now one word called extinguished. Extinguished, the word used to be used properly to denote the ERG. ERG is extinguished. Or you can tell the amplitude is reduced. Or you can tell the implicit time is prolonged. Like that, you can tell. This is the way you can tell. I, I told you, remember now the C wave they're showing, of course, not um, routinely we detect this C wave and all. I already told about ERP, remember? Early receptor potential. Early receptor potential. The A wave is here. A wave is starting point. Before A wave is starting point, some wave is there. Can you see this wave? This wave is called ERP, early receptor potential. What do you mean by that? I told you. Conversion of lumi to meta rhodopsin. Instead of never, these are all rhodopsin cycle. You are supposed, for example, you know, never forget as an ophthalmologist, you should know something about the rhodopsin cycle. How the rhodopsin cycle is taking place, what's happening, what happens, how the rhodopsin is getting regenerated, the role of vitamin A, everything you're supposed to know, unless you know better, of course, you'll have tough time in the examinations. You're supposed to know few points regarding rhodopsin cycle, never forget that. Meta 1, meta 2, cis, let's go some cis retinal, cis retinol, like this. There are so many changes. The enzyme taking part, never forget about that. You must know before going for examinations to read and go. I let told you also the potentials. Originate from my remember I told you bipolar cells that is inner nuclear layer, in the plexi and all. Amacrine in the amacrine cells also take part in this. What is happening now? They are significantly attenuated. In eyes where, of course, usually our idea is what diabetic retinopathy never forget the point. Diabetic retinopathy patients, the early is that the oscillated potentials will get deranged. Even the patient has got no diabetic changes in the fundus. If you do ERG, if you see some changes, you can suspect the retinopathy may, or expect the retinopathy may start in future. That's all. <clears throat> These are all also the potentials. Of course, and I told you, once you have done the dark adapter, you are going to for light adapter. A light adapter, what now? You are going to see the mainly the function of cones. See the beauty around single flash cone, the response is like this. Whereas a 30 hertz flicker, 30 hertz flicker gives you only the function of cones because the rods cannot respond to 30 hertz, the flickering rates. Rods can respond maximum up to 12 hertz. That's why when I use a 30 hertz flickers, you get only the cone response. You see the cone response. Now, we have, well, let's see now, when you have this thing, I'll, I'll tell you. When you have a blue light, a dark adapter, only the rod response. When you have a light adapter, a flickering light of 30 hertz, you are now only cone response. You can easily come to a conclusion now. Suppose the cone response is absent. The rod response is there in case of dark adapter. What do you mean by that? It's a cone dystrophy case. Suppose you got rod response is absent, the blue light response is absent, dark adapter. Whereas the 30 hertz is present, it's a Understand rod dis rod dystrophies, rod problems. Suppose both are absent. Rod cone dystrophies. Classical example is what your retinitis pigmentosa cases. This is what the actual response or you can reduct easily from this ERG. Can you see here now? See now, just by seeing that you can tell it's a dark adapter. See they have written rods, maximum combined, 
all the potential that means a dark and after die the first wave i told rod response nothing is there the of course combined response also not there potential so also not there there is what the entire dark and after is gone the response of retina is out that means what it is completely extinguished now extinguished in dark the same patient if you have cone response that means what the light adapter see the single flash now you see the cone response nothing is there and the rod response sorry they break out the 30 hertz response also is not there that means what both rods and cones have got damaged they are not functioning properly that is why maybe a case of you don't tell in examinatory examination sir the waves are all even a light adapter is dark adapter the waves are all damaged sir not seen sir sir extinguished sir maybe a case of rods and cones involvement when a classical example is pigmentosa retina dispigmentosa that's all your answer don't bother about straight away you can just inference one thing i'll tell you this is a picture given but normally in laboratories they give another paper another paper along with that what that paper will have see they will write in our laboratory in our laboratory a wave amplitude is so much b wave amplitude is so much a wave implicit time is so much b wave implicit time is so much they will write all the values next column what they will tell the patient's value they will give the normal value of, of a wave uh, amplitude implicit time b wave amplitude implicit time and the normal patient recorded value also they will give so that you can easily compare suppose the paper is not there you can tell easily with this uh, diagram with these pictures you can tell come to conclusion normally they are supposed to give a paper which will have all the values now see one more important other few important points regarding arg erg so you see now what is negative erg what is negative erg normally a wave is negative you know that whereas the b wave is a positive wave the amplitude is coming down the amplitude of b wave is coming down coming down coming that means what going towards the baseline going towards the negative side is called negative erg is called negative erg that's called what do you mean by that the amplitude of b wave is coming down in which cases which are the cases you can have this negative erg exam question again your answer never forget this congenital station nail blindness like albe punctatus oguchi disease so congenital station nail blindness oguchi disease these are all session nail blindness case you can have negative erg then second thing is what x linked retinoschisis x linked retinoschisis patients can have negative erg one more thing another exam question the way we have to ask you doctor is having um, iron for anybody inside at some time uh, iron can produce changes in the inside that is called sclerosis what the type of erg your answer is negative erg second sclerosis intraocular foreign bodies into the into the into the eye producing changes in the retina affecting our rods and cones also resulting in negative erg these three things at least remember now at least congenital station blindness nail blindness excellent retinal skisis and sclerosis other things may or may not doesn't matter one more thing can tell sir the ratio of b wave by a wave b by a you know the ratio of b by a ratio of b by a you know b by a what is b b by a wave b is always positive you know that a is negative it is more than one always when the amplitude of b wave is coming down this ratio will get altered this ratio will get altered that means what indirectly gives us a clue classically in a case of crv occlusion ischemic type vein occlusion central vein occlusion ischemic type that this ratio will get altered this is what the answer exam question for you that means also coming towards the negative side that's all never forget this crv occlusion ischemic type can produce a change of um, coming towards the negative erg can you see this what is the negative erg now b wave is smaller than gave that's all prognostic value where crv again crv occlusion is a problem going on the b wave is coming from bipolar cell and muller cell i told you now same with proliferative diabetic retinopathy end of calamities these are all the cases where you can have this negative erg classically uh, importance prognostically important for us sometimes you know these are of course may not be asked 
I record it relatively low illumination. It's called negative negative ERG. A wave is negative. B wave also amplitude reduced. These are all what is, I told you is negative negative ERG means this ERG recorded in low illumination. That means what the B wave amplitude coming down. I already told you the ratio ischemic CRV. One more thing is the negative positive. What do you mean by negative positive? The A wave will have more amplitude. The B wave is maybe normal. Never forget this. Negative positive means one is positive. That means B wave is normal. The A wave negative is more. But what is that? No significance. These are normal recording sometimes. No, don't bother about this. It's all some of the terminology they can ask in exams. What is dog negative negative ERG, sir? They will ask you. Just know this. Sir, negative ERG, negative negative means eliminate dim eliminations. A wave is negative, B wave amplitude is coming down. That's what normally I told CRV equations. What is negative positive means the A wave is going, going down further, 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 amplitude is increased, whereas the B wave is normal. What do you mean by that? Any importance? No, it's only normal, maybe a normal recording. By chance, you're asked what is negative, negative, what is negative positive, you answer these two things. By chance, in examination, if you're asked, what is negative, negative ERG, you tell. What is negative, positive ERG, you tell. That's enough. Now we've got pattern ERG is there. Check about patterns. They can, what do you mean? You know, the reason, reason here is, I already told you, ERG is what now? ERG, when you apply the light, it's going to fall any one of the, any part of the retina, they can have impulse. You can record it. Whereas if I want to record only from macula, macula functions, I can have pattern ERG. That's all. That's enough you, if you know this. The pattern ERG, it can give us a clue regarding the status of the function of the macula or foveal area. There you can have same thing, you know, we got negative N35 waves, like that P50, N95, like these waves are there. It's not normal how many milliseconds afterwards the N35 will come. How many milliseconds later on the P50 will come, they will have recordings. What will happen now? This amplitude, amplitude coming from the bottom to here, or the P50 the P coming somewhere here, that means what? Prolonged. That's called the latency. These are all the recorded. Just know this pattern, G, what for? Your answer is set to record the function of macula or phobia, this pattern here is useful. It's enough. Hope you understood something about the ERG. Hope so. It's not difficult. Only if you learn, no, it's easy. You have to see the charts and all interpret. Now, next is what? Electro-oculogram. What is electro-oculogram? Actually, you are going to find out the status and function of pigment epithelium. Status and function of pigment epithelium. Never forget this point. I already told you, each investigation for which layer? ERG for photoreceptors. EOG for your pigment epithelium. VEP, visual potential response for your ganglion cells in above. Three points just is enough for you. EOG is what? EOG is what now? I will tell you. There, ERG, I told you the light is while falling on the retina, action potential getting generated, they are going to record. Action potential generated. You are recording in ERG. What is happening in EOG? I will tell you one important point. He normally, what's happening is suppose the cornea, this choroid backside, choroid. See, we got the cornea is positive, choroid is negative, normally. That means what? Your cornea is positive, cornea is negative. Means what do you mean by that? A potential difference is there for which something electricity is moving on inside the eye. That is called resting current. That is called resting current. You should have a potential difference. Normal, example question again. Normal potential difference between anterior and posterior part of the eye is six millivolts. Normally present six millivolts. This is a normal potential difference between the anterior and posterior part of the eye. Cornea, never forget again, cornea is positive, cornea is negative area. Normally, you got 6 millivolts. That means what? What do you know that? Some electricity is moving on inside the eye. That is why, what's happening, I tell you, when a foreign body like iron enters your eye, 
suppose the foreign body is vitreous because it, because of this current the molecule of foreign body iron can gets dissociated into ions into ions they go backwards and forwards and deposit is everywhere the problem starts that's what's happening cirrhosis chalcosis all these things are happening because of the current of rest why current of rest because of potential difference existing normally what i'm going to do now this potential difference we are going to record in eog in dark as well as light that's all we are going to record the potential difference normal potential difference existing between anti and post part i in light and dark that is what going to be eog electrocologram now i'll tell you eog i'll tell you what they do see now you have got electrodes lateral canthus middle canthus middle canthus like the two you can electrodes are there see now you have got imagine now cornea is totally positive remember cornea is positive cord is negative when i move my eye this side when i move the eye this side see that this cornea comes this towards this electrode this electrode become positive that means back side almost here that means what this electrode become negative keeps on changing you turn right and left right and left you change keep on changing the electrodes getting changed plus and minus like this keep on changing then they are going to record the differences the potential differences in the chart how do they move that very simple again i tell you how do they move you can see it's like a, again it's like a one swell bowl see now you got central fixation and you got some lights here and there right and left the patient is here patient is observing i now state now you suppose the record right i i asked the patient towards right side and again left side right left left that means what this electrodes here this becomes sometimes positive this become negative again keeps on getting changed you record it the potential differences that means what positive negative record they can find out in dark you can record the difference of potential difference in dark that is called dark trough the minimum potential difference you can record that's called dark trough that is called dark trough whereas in a light adapted same thing patient light adapted you do the same test now we can have again positive negative you think i mean potential difference you can record the potential difference potential difference you can record you can now what is called a light peak two things are recorded the potential difference in dark the lowest or least amount the least value of your uh, potential potential difference whereas in light you record the maximum response that's called light peak now you got two things now you divide the light peak you divide the light peak by dark trough it's a ratio this is a ratio now light peak so many values dark trough so many values you like divide them you get what light peak by dark trough ratio is there this is called everyone knows of course it arden ratio arden ratio this is called as arden ratio what is arden ratio now this is the ratio between the light peak and the dark trough recorded in eog what the importance here now normal value ordinary ratio normal value tell normal value of ordinary ratio approximately 180 and above 185 180 like this we got 180 and above if the ratio is coming to 160 165 area it is something subnormal if the ratio is coming to 130 and below something that then it is of course it is what abnormal it becomes subnormal that means what what important point here never forget exam question again the most important investigation to rule out best disease best vitelli from dystrophy macula is your eog eog the arden ratio will be reduced it may come to 130 120 110 If it is one ten, it is pathog number. It is some important point in best vitelli from dystrophy. The Arden ratio is reduced. That's enough. In best vitelli from dystrophy and macula, the Arden ratio is reduced. This is what you are supposed to tell in the exams. So now, here can you see the recordings now? See the dark trough area. See the light peak area. Can you see this? And here also you can see now they have given Arden. light peak value odd and light peak like they got some values but never forget the odd ratio is 110 120 means a classical best 
classical best disease which is an autosomal dominantly involved problems inherited problems best disease best vitel form dystrophy is an autosomal dominantly inherited problem affecting your macula bilateral this what um, eog one other way we used to tell no the best investigation for best is eog the best investigation for best disease is eog never forget that the same thing only again say dark stuff and highlight on all of okay now i told you normal i told you 180 and all less than 165 of course 165 and all subnormal less than 130 is extinguished sometimes they can have <clears throat> abnormal eog with normal eog normal eog this question they can ask you eog is normal doctor eog is abnormal doctor one first exam again again tell repeat it tell best disease at least tell try to remember best try to remember best one more point of course chloroquine retinopathy this area this fellow also will have same problem that means what eog is abnormal ERG may be normal. At least remember, try to remember two points. Don't try to remember all the points. Forget everything. Best option what? Don't. At least try try to remember one or two point. Try to remember the exam. These two and then during the exams, they will ask you about the same question asked in the exams. Sir, never forget best. One more chloroquine. That's all. If you're able to remember furnace fly magnesium, okay, great. Doesn't matter. At least tell chloroquine because there are common things you are supposed to. 